Let's start with Green Bay Dallas. The box score illustrates how even these were. First downs even, passing first downs even, rushing first downs even. Both were 6-11 and 11 on third down. Total plays even, total yards mostly even, time of possession even. I mean, it was really a remarkably close game. Green Bay, the better team in the first half. As we warned you about Dallas, I felt Dallas had a great roster. I felt Dallas was at home. My concern about Dallas was they hadn't played an urgent, meaningful game in a month. And Green Bay's been in this playoff mode for about six weeks now. My concern was Dallas would not match Green Bay's energy earlier. And I said, because of that, I think it's a go-either-way game. It's exactly what happened. By the second half, Dallas got its bearings. Then you had a football game. That first half, Dallas was lucky to be in it at halftime. The most remarkable play of the weekend was not Aaron Rodgers to Jared Cook. I know everybody's looking at that and saying that's the most remarkable play of the weekend. You know how those NFL scouts want quarterbacks to have bigger than average hands? There's a reason. So you don't fumble the football. The biggest play of the weekend was when Aaron Rodgers got absolutely smoked by Jeff Heath on the backside blitz and got a jarring knockout punch. And Aaron Rodgers holds on to the football. If he doesn't, Dallas recovers. Great field goal kicker. They could end the game right there. That the, the, the season for the Packers was not that throw. The season for the Packers was Aaron Rodgers' ability. I mean, that is a car wreck. To hold on to that football is remarkable. That, to me, was more impressive than the throw. I've seen Aaron Rodgers make a 1,000 great throws, and that was great. But there are very few quarterbacks in the league, including Big Ben and Cam, the big guys, that take that shot and hold on to the football. That was a wow. And then after getting smoked like that, jarring, that'll knock the jelly beans around a little in the jar, right? Comes back a few plays later and delivers the throw of the year. That is just unbelievable. Not, forget the throw. That was great. But to overcome that hit and make the throw? That's number one. Number two is, can we just put the Tony Romo should be the starting quarterback stuff to bed? Dak Prescott was unbelievable. To be that good in that game, struggle early, go in, get coached up against that kind of pressure and that kind of team, and for Dak Prescott to play that well in the second half was really remarkable. For a fourth-round rookie quarterback in that spot to play that well and make so many huge plays, including the two-point conversion, was to be as impressive as Aaron Rodgers. It really was. Aaron's been here before. Aaron's got a Super Bowl. Aaron's been in this spot. Aaron's been in these games. Aaron's made those throws. That was all fresh for Dak Prescott. He completed 70% of his second half throws, had 105 passer rating, better than Aaron's in the second half. Wow. So let's put the Tony Romo stuff to bed. It's over. Dak is going to lead this team for a decade and is going to be terrific and is going to lead you to all sorts of great wins, including playoff wins and probably got a Super Bowl. The kid's the real deal. What poise. Here's the other thing. Can we stop... Today's a day where a bunch of guys who didn't even play high school football become experts. Can we stop with the I can't believe Dak Prescott spiked the ball argument? Oh, good hell, people. In real time, I'm yelling at my TV set, spike the ball. Somewhere 90% of people, I've seen Tom Brady spike the ball. He just picked up a first down. They trail 31-28. There's 45 seconds left. He had one timeout left. Do you know why he spikes the ball and why this is really smart? Because when you keep the one timeout you have left, which you do when you spike the ball, it allows you on the next play to use the entire field. Yeah, I'd say giving a fourth-round rookie quarterback with a season on the line the availability to use all the field makes up for spiking the ball. Say it out loud. 
This is what people are criticizing Dak Prescott for this morning. Say this all out loud. Rookie fourth-round quarterback leads a wild comeback against hottest team in the league, most talented quarterback on planet Earth, biggest game of his life, driving for the tying or winning score, completes two huge throws, clock winding down to 49 seconds, spikes the ball to stop the clock. And, and that rises to outrage? Jason Garrett, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, explains the spiking in utter chaos after the game. We just felt like that was the right thing to do at that time. Uh, you know, keeping the time out to be able to kick a field goal is really important if you can do it. Uh, so in those situations, when you make a first down, we believe you clock it there so you keep that, that time out in your back pocket. Obviously, in that situation, we're trying to go down and score a touchdown. Yes. So you want to keep as much time on the clock yes. as you can. Yes. And then uh, if the clock is going and you need a timeout to get yourself in field goal range. Yes. Still Did you hear what you. he said there? Dallas thought they could win the game. Dallas didn't want to go to overtime with Aaron Rodgers. Dallas had no interest going to overtime against the hottest, most talented quarterback on the planet. Dallas spiked that ball because they thought, hey, we're going to score. Green Bay can't stop us. We're going to get a first down. We're going to score and win the game. Do you notice in the second half something happened? Nobody could stop anybody. That was basically three and a half hours where neither defense could make big stops. Dallas had the game one if they could, I don't know, hold Green Bay to not completing a ball in field goal range. They knew Green Bay was throwing. They couldn't control the pocket. This is a game in which every time the offense was asked to make a big play, the offense made a big play. So Dak spikes the ball thinking, I'm saving my time out because they're not going to stop me anyway. But I want the whole field so I can throw down the middle of the field, call a timeout if I have to settle for a field goal. So a uh, takeaway on this game is, come on now. Aaron was amazing, but Aaron's amazing all the time. What Prescott did as a baby was one of the great remarkable performances I've ever seen for any young player in the NFL.